And we are recording. How about that? Give it a <laughs> so again, like I said, I want it to be interactive, uh, especially if you're a newer agent. If you have a question, if I ask you to, to hold off or wait because we're going to get to it, then it's not that I'm putting your question off, but maybe you're answering a step beforehand or something. The newer agency, especially if you've never used uh, any other type of system before to do this, you, you're already thinking ahead. Some of the others are going, wait a minute, that's how we, I don't want to hear how we used to do it because we have to do it this way now. Now, I will not be covering DocuSign not in this class per se. And it's more just to make sure everyone understands with respect to uh, opportunities. That's all right, the cat can come in. We won't buy. The more the merrier. But at any rate, we're gonna go over opportunities. Uh, you've probably already seen, and we'll start the basics. We're just gonna grab a random contact. I have a dummy contact that I like to use for testing. Uh, we're going to create an opportunity and just kind of go through and from the opportunity standpoint, going through each of the tabs within opportunity so that you understand what each of them mean and the significance behind them. Because there's a lot of little lines that no one really goes over because they, they brush over them so quickly that you actually have no idea. It's like, well, you know, what's it doing there? I, I have no idea what it's there for. So some of them are critical and some of them are like if you do it it's great it's recommend i teach everyone to do it because if you know how to do it now when they do make it mandatory you're ready for this so we're going to go ahead and share my screen da, 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 da. which one do i want oh i'll make it that so everyone's able to see my screen <laughs> So there's my there's my good buddy Daffy Duck. We're going to he's my test subject. I give him a bogus phone number and, and a bogus email address. The minimum that you want to have for a contact if you can. I normally open or create an opportunity from the contact itself. Now you're I'm sure you're aware that if you go to opportunities, and if at any time you're in command and you don't remember the names of the applets and that's what, when you hear the term applet that's what all these are they're just little apps within command if you click on the uh red square with the kw it expands so you can see the names of each of the respective applets so as you can see right here we have the button to create opportunity as i'm on a team if i'm going to do this testing i would create here create opportunity However, one thing that I, the reason I like to do it from my personal is because when you create the opportunity, it auto fills the information from the contact card as much as it can. So I'm going to come right over here to opportunities. I'm going to click on create opportunity. One second, I want to do something. I, I normally have it on and I don't see it on. It's driving me insane. That's what happens when you get older. See, this way you can see where I'm pointing now. This is what I wanted. So my apologies for it not being there before. But we're going to click on Create Opportunity. Now, it's going to ask you, if you're not on the team, you're not going to have the ability to do this. You won't see team. Being that this particular, if you are on a team, being that I am creating this opportunity for a contact found within my personal uh, contacts, I would not be able to select the team. Opportunity type. Are you the listing agent or are you the buyer's agent? Are you the listing agent or the buyer's agent? You need to decide that up front. If you click on listing and you start everything, and then realize after the fact, oh no, I needed it to be a buyer agent. Can I switch it? The answer is no. So if I do this and I'll just come up with something, there's my test. Now if they know it's Daffy, they know it's a test. I'll just put 
three, and we'll just put 100,000, just something on there. So if I create this right now, <clears throat> and then I come in here and I'm going, okay, I got my Daffy Duck listing. Oh, no, this is not a listing. This is supposed to be a buyer. There's no way to change this on the back end. There's no way to change it currently to make it a buyer's agent. So I would have to go back. If you see these two little links right here, one that says sales pipeline, and the other one says listing cultivate. I'm going to go here because this is where this particular opportunity resides in that particular stage and phase. And there he is. Click on the three dots and archive the opportunity. If you ever create an opportunity and you make a mistake and you have to start over, I don't mean you, you got the address wrong or something, but if you create a listing and it should be a buyer, whatever, you just archive it. Once you archive it, it's good. It's gone. You do not, and I'm going to come back and create another one with for Daffy because we love Daffy. I should just copy and paste Daffy. So I'll come over, Daffy Duck, Opportunities. And if you notice, there's no opportunity listed there. So just to let you know, when you do create opportunities, and whether it's a buyer or a seller, and you do go through the transaction itself, in other words, they buy or, they, or they've sold the house or whatever the case may be, when you come back to that particular contact card, you will see the previous opportunities listed here. So you know what type of business you've done with them or, or your, your past with them. What you don't want to do is, let's see, I'll create, uh, I'm going to create this one just to create it. And then when I come over here and I click it again, remember, let's say, oh, no, it's not supposed to be a listing. It's supposed to be a buyer. So I'm going to move my little thing out of the way here. Do you see the lost opportunity? Can everyone see on the upper right-hand corner, get rid of the yeah. learn more, right here where it says lost opportunity? Give me a shake. Give me a nod that you're still awake and you're still with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. If... You do not want lost opportunity unless, let's say that I make the listing active and then Daffy decides to fire me as, the, as his listing agent. There's no chance of me getting Daffy in. He's now a lost opportunity, which means I've lost the customer. It's also the reason I made his his list price $100, so it doesn't look bad for me, even though it's a test. And then I save that. So I'll go back to the con. And if you notice, I drop, I click his name, I can go back to his contact this way. I don't like the fact that it likes to, it likes to open 400,000 uh, opportunities. But if you notice now, See how it was listed? And it was a lost opportunity. Please describe why it was lost. I don't know, because it, it's a test. And you do have to give a reason why it's lost. As soon as it's updated, I'm going to go back to the contact. It will show as lost. It takes, it does take a minute. I'm going to close all these extra 9,000 that we have open, but it will show, it, it will be lost. So let's go ahead and create one and let's go through the opportunity itself so that you understand. So what you want to do is provide as much information as you can. Okay. So this is a listing. So on this screen, you know, the market center whether you're Oviedo, Lake Nona, or Waterford. It doesn't matter which you have. I have all three because I'm a member of all three market centers. 
you're only going to have your respective market center there. So don't worry about that. Make sure you have the opportunity type correct. If it's a, if you're the listing agent, make sure it's listing. If you're the buyer's agent, please make sure you put buyer. If you don't, what are we going to use to make the correction? Your first quiz. We're going to archive the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it looks like I got somebody in chat. Give me one second there. There we go. And Julia, just to let you know, I know that uh, I think you jumped on after I had already mentioned. For the most part, you can unmute yourself. If you don't want low camera, I don't have no problem with that. But uh, I'm generally not monitoring the uh, the uh, the chat because of the full screen. I'll share everything with you. So I apologize if I miss your comments or anything. That's fine. Like I said, not a problem. So we want to make sure we have the, the opportunity type. Make sure the client, if there was a co-seller, Put the co-seller there. Just make sure if if there was a let's say the co-seller was Daisy Duck, Daisy Duck has to be a contact within command. So make sure that whomever's going to be here, they're both already in command. You come down as the as the rainmaker and and uh, chief uh, process. I'm the one that makes all the SOPs for our team. My wife and I are husband and wife team with the NADMEN. And the tags. I like to use the tags. Where did this particular opportunity come from? Is it from our sphere of influence? Was it a referral? Was it, a, you know, like maybe another business or someone that's actually referred the business to us? Is it maybe even, uh, you know, uh, an agent referral? Is this a repeat customer? Did I get this through farming? When my wife and I farm our, our neighborhood, our subdivision of 400 homes. Is it you know from us door knocking or doing an event? Was it actually someone we met at an event? I do a lot of events. I'm, a, I'm an avid motorcyclist and I do a lot of charity type events on, on, with the motorcycle. So I meet a lot of people and that's how I can get some of my leads through people I meet at uh, these events. What you want to know is when you go back at the end of year, let's say this is now January of 2022, and you go back and look at all the opportunities that you had in 2021, and you'll be able to see them. You want to look at your tags and see where did I get most of my business from? The reason that becomes important is, let me ask you, why do you think that would be important? Because I, you may already know without me having to tell you. You might want to venture a guess. Why would you think it'd be important? Well, now you know where it's it's coming from. So you don't want to have it like a repeat or you you know you're familiar with what action you had taken to get to that particular group. That's 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 very close. And okay. Because like you're saying <laughs> with the action, but you want to know where you need to spend your marketing dollars. Yeah. In other words, if you're getting let's just say for example that you do 20 transactions this year and out of those 20 transactions i mean we even have custom i have a custom tag that we met them at an open house we had three list we had three closings last year from people we met at an open house nice. so open house is a, is a source of that's where i make and open houses are cheap because you can basically do them for free unless you know if you want to provide snacks or something we actually have a popcorn maker, all popcorn makers that you see at like carnivals or events like that. And I bring the popcorn maker in, give them a little bitty bag of popcorn, but the house suddenly has that that smell of fresh popcorn. Mm. Worst thing is getting people to leave because no one wants to leave because they want more popcorn. <laughs> and hopefully they're clean too, right? Well, you know? Not making a mess in there. We house. haven't done it since COVID for the very reason of COVID. Yeah. So, but that was something that we were doing. Uh, we know that, I know for a fact that out of most of our transactions from last year were, well, uh, were past clients or referrals. Okay. So we need to make sure that if we're getting, if I'm getting referrals from like this, my, my wife and I are members of two chambers of commerce. So we need to know if we're getting business from being a member of that chamber of commerce, 
we need to remain an active member of that chamber of commerce. If you know that when you go door knocking, you're getting a lot of your business from door knocking and going out there, bring you know, bring them a flyer. We do we we bring a quarterly newsletter to our subdivision, letting them know the market conditions, the homes in the area in the in the neighborhood that have sold or recent recent transactions, and then we also let them know maybe there is something with the homeowner, the community association, because we don't have an HOA. It's a voluntary thing, but there's a community association and they hold little events or maybe the city's holding something that, that we can go by, you know, it's nearby, but you let them know what's going on, not only real estate, but from a personal perspective. So it's something they may be interested in. We sold, uh, we recently sold a home, older couple. Um, I believe he was 88 and she was 85. They had every one of our newsletters for the past eight years wow. every one of them people and they knew my wife was in the business before i was and they had all the newsletters and they would let us know when they didn't like something in a newsletter too so <laughs> we don't like them that much or we don't like them but that's what i use the tags for the tags are actual a very good way for you to learn where do i need to spend my dollars because if you, because become, become November, late November, December of this year, you should already have your business plan for 2022. Well, if you can go back to your opportunities and see where you're getting your business from, you know, as we're already business planning right there. Since we're the listing agent here, there's absolutely no way we can know the estimated close date right now not even active we don't even we're not even saying it's active right now estimated list price if you are the listing agent you should know what the house is listing for the commission rate the commission rate is your side of the transaction only so if you're doing the standard six percent and you're giving three to the buyer and three for the listing agent or three for the broker because remember the commission rates for the broker even though we say, well, as the agent, I get 3%. Well, no, the broker's getting 3%. You're getting what's left over. Opportunity phase. You can leave these as they are now. However, there's the cultivate stage, the appointment stage, and the active stage. And they're pretty much what they sound like with the exception of active. You can be active. And I set us, I set up in my particular active that were pre MLS. So I have a signed listing agreement, but it's not active in the MLS. That's what this one's for. You can make it however it is you want. This tool is customizable for you. So you can make these say whatever it is you want. So if it's active and I'm before it's in the MLS, now it's in the MLS, we're doing showings and open houses. Maybe now we got multiple offers and we're doing uh, you know, negotiations. Legacy is something that was left over from an import function that really never worked. So now I'll go ahead and I'm going to put it now for active, pre MLS active. And I'm going to create. As you can see, there it is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click here to open up the opportunity. Now, in the opportunity, I want to make sure you understand, one, for those, those who were with me earlier and, and anyone who didn't hear, why do we click this? Only if, Renee? You need to make a change. No. Only if it's a lost opportunity. Uh, this is not for corrections. This is if they fire you as the listing agent and you're not going to get to list the home again. Okay. That's the only time. This this is, uh-oh, I messed up and they're going with Remax or they're going with someone else. Okay. They're not, they're not using me anymore. That's the only time we would ever use lost opportunity. We pray this never happens to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
over to the left over here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> First, I'm going to show you, we have the details tab. You'll hear that very frequently between details tab and, uh, and the opportunity. And of course, there's a detail tab in uh, DocuSign, which when we do the DocuSign class, you'll see. Seller profile. We'll go over that when we get to it. The documents. Anytime you see this tab right here, I see documents. My first thought in my mind is compliance. Offers and commissions. These were recently integrated. They were, used to be two separate tabs. Now they've made them one, which actually is very easy for us. Notes, so that you can make notes on the opportunity. The same way you make notes in a contact card, you can make notes in an opportunity. Now, if you're a single agent, you may go, well, why do I want to put notes in the opportunity? Maybe there's sometimes you want to, you're, you're working in the opportunity and you want to put it in and out without having to go back to the contact card. You know, they, for someone like myself that's on a team, if I make a note, everyone on my team gets to see the notes. <laughs> Come over here. Our first little field here is general information. This is where you're going to go through and you're going to see a half million of these little lines. Have you looked at these before and said, I wonder what these are for? Yes. The, these are basically, think of it this way, as, as I'm sure if you're in Ignite, I'm sure they're telling you, you got to feed your data bank. You have to feed it. You have to feed it. You have to feed it. Well, the artificial intelligence that's behind our platform, which is actually called Kelly, just like the app, the, the, the name Kelly is going away from the app. So, but Kelly is the artificial intelligence. She needs information so that she can become smarter. So what we ask agents to do is when you click on the little pencil right here to edit, it tells you what phase we're in now and what stage. If you know the time frame, you can put you can put a month or you, you know if it's like now I'm gonna, I'm not going to put anything. Estimated close date. Still don't know that because we're not even under contract. We don't need to fill that out right now. Let's say that Renee, Renee, you're the one that's wanting to list your home. Or actually, you know what, Renee, I called you, and I want to list my home. So and we're talking on the phone. First thing you want to do is what? Schedule an appointment with me. Mm -hmm. Let's say we met this past Saturday. So we're going to go and we're going to say that we met on the 6th. That's when, or that's when I called you, or actually let's do this again. I called you Thursday. Mm -hmm. Every day, I want to meet with you. I want to list my home. So this is when you scheduled the appointment. That's when the appointment was scheduled. When did we have the appointment? We met. Good Lord, I wish they'd get over the screen thing they got. We met on Saturday. So the appointment date. Now, when you showed up to list my home, did I sign the listing agreement right away? Renee says, of course, I'm the best listing agent there is. Therefore, you signed. So that's when the, where it says agreement one. If it's a buyer, when did they sign the buyer's agreement? If it's a listing, when did they send, sign the listing agreement? That's why we just say agreement one. Contract date. We don't have a contract yet. We don't have a close date because we're not active yet. Back to the estimated listing price and commission rate, which we put in earlier. The reason these dates here are important. Kelly will eventually be able to tell us. If we fill out all the information in here, so let's just say, for example, we list the house next week. And then all of a sudden, you know what? We get an offer on the 16th. Actually, it's not going to let me do that. So hold on. Because it's too far in advance. So I we get a contract today. Yay, Renee, you are the best listing ever. We just met. I'm already on the contract. So I have a contract an executed contract. The next thing that I'm going to fill out is the estimated close date. 
Where am I going to find that? On the contract. Mm -hmm. When they say the close date. So if they say they want to close by March 12th, that's the estimated close date. It's just an estimate. Once you get closer to when you want to close the transaction, it's going to ask you for the actual close date. But this is an estimate because what Kelly is going to do is eventually she's going to recognize the market you're in, the listing when you put all the information in, it's, it's supposed to be within the next couple of years. I know they're working on it now, but I, I'd rather them take their time and get it right. The artificial intelligence, when you bring your contract in, whether you do it through DocuSign or wherever, when you put it in to into the documents, Kelly's going to be able to read the contract, figure out, okay, in this conditions, in this market, this is your likelihood you're going to close. This is probably what you're actually going to get. It's going to know all those conditions based off all the information we feed here. And what this does is it says, you know what? The average Keller Williams agent, after they schedule an appointment, they normally hold the appointment two days later. They get the listing agreement signed. And then after they're active, you know, they, they have a contract within two days. This is the information that Keller Williams can use when we're attracting other agents. Well, you know, the average KW agent does this. How do they know the average? They have to have this information from all mm -hmm. the transactions. So we're going to go ahead and save that for now. If we had a property, we could do one of two things. And actually, I'm just going to select one. I could either go up here and click this pencil. <clears throat> when you're first listing a home, it's not going to be in the listings, correct? Because it's not active yet. The only way you're going to be able to select from listings is that you're either the buyer's agent or you forgot to do this and and the uh the property's already gone active we're just going to put we have to put the country i can pick anything i don't care so i'm going to put that there that's his and i'm going to save it see how it's changed that information there come down here to the seller's worksheet seller worksheet. This is not the estimated net sheet that you're required to give to sellers. This is just for command because the only thing you really need to do here is put the buyer's commission. What is their get? What are they getting? If you know the mortgage balance, put it in there. If you know the second mortgage balance, put it in there. The only thing they're really asking for right now is making sure both commission rates are in there. Any questions up to now? No. It's pretty simple, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Seller profile. You see this here? App association. If Daffy Duck had downloaded my app and created a login, I would see the fact that he is re registered with Consumer Platform. And then there's a buyer and seller guide. For this particular one, he would get the seller's guide. And it reminds me of the pizza tracker where you would be able to go through and say, okay, we've done this, we've done this, we've done that. You know, this is where you are in the transaction process. And before we leave, I'll show you where the guides are so that you, you can make sure that you're comfortable with what, what it's showing. But it's kind of nice to be able to say, click here, and this, you know, this way they know they're going to get something on their app telling them this is where they are. That's all that is for the seller profile. Nothing more than that. Our favorite one, documents. Well, that say that we, when I see documents, I think of. All right, now you gotta you gotta stay awake on me. Compliance. Oh, um... Compliance. I have a question. As you talking through all of this. Are you showing? I only see you talking. I don't see you actually hitting and open these, this portion up. Where? What are you seeing right now? 
just you and your face. I'm not seeing where you opening anything. You don't see the screen at all? No. Let me see. Let me change the screen then. I have been able to see the screen. I'm changing the share so that, that how about now, Susan? Can you see it now? I can see you, but I thought that as you were talking and you were hitting whatever you were hitting, we would be able to see that as well. No? What are you seeing right now? Just your face. I'm not seeing where, like, as you were saying, just we're going to because you're on an iPad, iPad, you need to make sure that you're not just doing the uh, change your view. Do you have, like, gallery view or the speaker view on now? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see. Is everyone else seeing the, the listing right now? Oh, I can see it, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure everyone is seeing it. <laughs> Any difference? Carly, are you seeing the, the uh, up your face? Carly, see it. I'll put the, everybody back up so I can see everyone's face again real fast. How you doing, Renee? Are you still seeing just my face? That's enough for scary yeah. right here. Because it could be the iPad setting. That's why I'm wondering. I'm such a visual learner. I don't think I would have been able to follow you without seeing your screen. Well, if you can see my you face. Know what? Let me, well, <laughs> you know, well, hold on, Renee. Let me try something real fast. With everyone else, with everyone else's indulgence, let me try something. Sure. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this real fast. Now, what are you seeing? Now I can see what you everybody, what you were talking about, which it's, is probably what I showed. The you. iPad gets locked on a certain screen, mm -hmm. and has tendency to always be locked on that certain screen. So let me, uh, for everyone else, and uh, for those who just joined us, let me go ahead and go back real fast. So that so that Renee can see. Here's where we're referring to the details. This is the pencil that you click to edit the information here in the details. Okay. Then I went here and clicked on the pencil. Okay. To edit the property information. And like I said, being that this was a listing, I would not be able to come up here and click where it says select from listing normally because it's not in the MLS yet. However, if you failed to do this beforehand, once it's active, you're definitely gonna want it up here because you do want that information populated. This is the seller profile, which essentially tells you whether or not this particular contact downloaded your app and, log and created a profile. Like I said, we'll look at the guides a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Documents, what do we say it is? What, what, I see documents, I think. Compliance. There you go. Julia's yeah. like, she's like, yes. Woo so the first thing you want to do is come over and pick the checklist type. Drop down. Is it a listing for a single family home or townhouse? Is it a listing for a condo? Is it a listing for vacant land? Or is it a listing for new construction? So being that you're new, I'm going to go through each of them just to show you the differences. So if I click on listing new construction, this is what's required. The broker synopsis and the builder's masking listing agreement. There's not that much there. Same holds true with the under contract. So when it's listed, there's a listed folder. And then once you get a contract, there's an under contract folder. That's why you see the two. So this is where the listing paperwork is expected to be found by compliance. And once mm -hmm. you're under contract, this is where the contract or the under contract, everything will be there. You see, it's only a couple items there. I mean, it's, it's easy. Now let's go to listing vacant land. There's a slight difference now. As you can see, is it required, conditionally required? And there's some things that could be optional. 
You need to have the brokerage numbers. That's true whether it's a vacant land, condo, or a home. You have to have the broker, even the new construction. You need the broker synopsis. So if it says required, it's required that you're going to need a copy of this. Being that this is a listing agreement, the only person that should have signed this might be you, the agent, and the seller. Because this is under the listed holder. And this is what the seller signs before anything goes live. Once we come here, you'll see the list has changed again. You're not going to see the vacant land listing agreement. That was under listed. You're going to see the vacant land sales contract. So you see what is required and what is conditionally required. Now, if someone comes to you with a sales contract that has, we'll just say they're using an FHA loan type they're using fha financing mm -hmm. compliance will recognize this is fha and this will go from conditionally required to required because it's required for this contract mm -hmm. so we'll try if you don't catch it we try to and we will go in and flip that that flag from conditional to required you can see all the little nice little things that we want if for any reason you need to add something that's not listed there. Add an item. Put its name on there. Say what type of document it is. Even if it's, you know, I don't know what type of document it is. Hit other. Kind of put an additional note. And then where manual is it on your computer, which is like it would be right now. But you can upload it from there. Closed. If you have, and you're the listing agent, you may not get it. You may not get the full inspection report. All right, whatever. If I get it, sure, it's, that's why it's optional. May I highly recommend that I'm, I'm almost wanting to get our broker to change this so that we can make it required. You want your settlement statement. Normally, the MCAs are putting these in to the uh, into the opportunities for you. But when I get a copy of the settlement statement from title at closing, I already put it in there. I'm not waiting. Especially for my buyers. The reason I do that for the buyers is December of this December of 2021, I will be sending an email. Attached to the email will be the settlement or ALTA statement for them to file for homestead extension. They got to file a homestead. They need the settlement statement or ALTA statement. I don't have to keep them on my computer. I'll keep them in command. Now let's go to condo. This is a whole nother beast. <laughs> Here's the listed. So you can see what's required. And then when it goes under contract. And then same with clothes. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll get the appraisal report really shouldn't but maybe you'll get a copy of it or a page or something from it so whether you have the file on your local computer or if you keep it in DocuSign wherever you want to put it that's where you can add it from so if it's the listed the only signatures required on those documents would be the sellers and then the agent or the agent broker for the under contract it needs to be executed both buyer and seller. Remember, both the buyer and seller have to sign the sales contract. The buyer is never going to see the listing. And, and our favorite one of all, single family home or townhouse. There's slight differences between them. For example, when it says condo, there's a condo rider that's required. This is not a condo. So there is no con. You don't need a condo rider if it's not a condo. So what we did our best to do, what I did my best to do was create lists that reflected what compliance needed for each type of transaction. <clears throat> I tried to do the same. If this said, was a buyer, then it would say buyer, single family home, townhouse, buyer, condo, 
buyer vacant land, buyer new construction. And ironically, under buyer, you just have this list. You wouldn't have the listed part. Once you have everything, once you have everything that's required. Now, if you have a if, if under contract, of course, you're going to have the broker synopsis of it showing. The best thing to do is right here, just a common practice. You see where it says the broker synopsis here? The day you put it active in the MLS, you basically save a copy as a PDF of the broker synopsis and put it in here. For this one here, it says, oh, I want the broker synopsis. Get the same broker synopsis, but after you make it pending. So they can see it was pending. It's that simple. It is really that simple. Mm -hmm. Offers and commissions. This is what they recently updated. You can always click on the learn more. And they go through and tell you how to submit a request, a commission request for an opportunity. There's step by step how you go through. And, I mean, it's what's funny is this is now outdated. A lot of this is outdated, which is actually funny, but it is the same principle. May I recommend whether you are the listing agent or buyer agent, have all your offers in here in, that, in order to. Add an offer, you just click add new offer. And create the offer. So the only information that you need is the offer date, which is today. We said it was going to close, what was it, March uh, 12th, I think it was. So we'll say it's going to close on March 12th. So when was the contract date? When is the estimated close date? That can always change it for us. When it goes to parties, you see how it pulled the information as far as the name, email, and phone. And it's pulled my information here. Who's the buyer? Of the buyer. Whether I select pre approved, pre qualified, really doesn't matter. I generally want to know which one it is. It better be pre approved. And who's the co op agent? My wife gets to be the uh, agent. She's like, I don't think so. And that's all you have to do for that. Oh, nice. The next terms. Okay, so you can either put, you don't have to split this up if you don't want to. So let's just say they're going to give us $300,000. That's what the offer price is. I can put 300000 here and it populates the sales price. Or I could put the three hundred thousand dollars under finance. It still populates the sales price. What you can't cannot do is come over to sales price and try to type in there. Now I know a lot of people. Well, they're putting twenty percent down. Who cares? Just put the amount down of the price. <clears throat> what I do for my for our team, if it's all cash. I put the cash price down. If there's any financing to it whatsoever, even if they're only financing $150,000, I just want the price. Now the next is your earnest amount or your good faith down payment, your escrow. Here, you can either put in the dollar amount or the percentage, but you're generally gonna know the dollar amount. So if he puts down 3,000 is going to be 1%. Now, I want you to, I want to make sure you listen to this particular part only because this throws a lot of agents off. If you come back and change, if you try to do it by percentage and, you, and you're stuck on, okay, it's 1%, if I change this right here, I can't change it there. I just told you that. I said, make it the 290. Good, they did clear it. Whoops, yeah, 3,000, wow. He's only putting 290, you better get another job. <laughs> it 
it may have just fixed this. It used to be you changed this, this stayed, and it would mess you up. Thank God it may be changed. So just okay. make sure the earnest amount stays the same for you. Okay. Option fee. We're not Texas, Illinois, and I forgot whoever else. They have an option fee we don't have. Ignore it. We really don't need it. Termination option. Think of it as your inspection period. Seven days, 10 days, whatever the case may be. And then we generally are not using this down here as much, but it says seller will contribute how many dollars to a residential service contract, which is a fancy way of saying a home warranty. Residential service contracts, a home warranty. Or seller will contribute so much to settlement costs. What we don't like is the fact that it has to be a dollar amount. They should give us the ability to either put a dollar amount or a percentage. Because if they're going to give 3% back for closing costs and the price changes, now I got to go back here and change it again. I don't like that. However, if you'd like to, that's what those are for. Agent analysis. Be very, very, very careful with agent analysis. You do not want to appear to be steering in any way, shape, or form. Simply state the facts and only put it in the summary. I put no pros and no cons. This is when you want to close. This is how this is, you know, this is the this is the uh, escrow. This is when they want to close. Uh, so many days inspection, whatever, you know, any concessions. That's all I put. I will never put anything else. Because the second you do that, you look like you're trying to, to steer them one way or the other. Okay. Then I save it. There's an offer. Now, I'm going to say accept or reject. Let's just say, for example, that my seller decides to accept this offer. I can reject it. Or if I need to, I hit the three dots right here. I can add negotiations, which was really useless. Edit the offer. Like if I want to go back and say, oh, no, you know what? It wasn't that. I can go up here and click up here to terms. I forgot it's $300,000. So now it's back to $300,000. I now accept it. Now you can notice it will say the commission status is open. It's the same thing you see on documents when you haven't submitted anything to the market center. We haven't submitted this commission to our MCA. So I say that I want to, to I want to make this my commission request. I got, if this is the one we're going with, and it sounds great, once you have the accepted offer, come over and click Manage uh, Commissions. Being that we're doing this as quickly as we did, it's like, what's the contract date? Even though we physically gave it the date earlier, you sometimes have to go back and say So now it's telling me that if I sell this house at that price, blah, 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 the commission will be $9,000. Is that pretty simple so far? Yes. So we're looking at it, we're going, okay, that looks pretty simple. If I submit this, almost, I'm tempted to submit it, but I'm like, I don't want to count this. And whatever. This is so my MCA knows. So I now submitted it. So now it's submitted. If I need to manage the commission, once it's once it's been submitted and do I want to contribute? Not this time. And I apply. 
you've opted out. I like how they tell you, are you sure? <laughs> they couldn't process my request because, but you're gonna see a new button that says terminate commission. I'm sure you've probably seen enough, uh, everything on the different, Try it again, see what's going on. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. So let mission termination update. Uh oh. Renee's, Renee's eating something good. <laughs> Let's go back here and let's just say now that I need to change this. Let's say we, we went through inspections and we're given $10,000 or whatever. We're going to change the, the purchase price down to 290. Mm -hmm. I've already submitted the commission, right? Mm -hmm. So I need this number to change so I can be accurately paid. What they want you to do. Let's go back into documents. This is the two-step process. The second step is the most important. I'm doing this one now just to get you used to doing it. Go to add comment. Who's from, is anyone from uh, Lake Nona? Anyone from Waterford? Are we all Oviedo? Oviedo. All right. Oviedo. So let's put to fill. Terminate this request. He's going to say, you're an idiot. <laughs> In addition, this is the one you need to do. Even if you don't do this to the comments, send an email to him. I'm telling him to terminate. He's going to know why. But if you need to make a change, Please make a change. The, the, the purchase prices, whatever change you need to do, put it in this comment. Then send him an email, Phil, and make sure you give me the address and tell him I need uh, you know this this particular the listing price has changed or or whatever the case may be. Because you need to see, because if once this has changed, this changes. Mm. Right. So that's the reason you do not, all you're making is a correction. You want a commission correction. You're correcting your commission request. You can't go up here and edit these anymore because you've submitted them to the MCA. So you need to let the MCA know that this particular, you give them the address and you let them know uh, what's changed. Is it simply the sales price? And let them know sales price has changed from three hundred thousand dollars to two hundred ninety or whatever it is that it's changed to. So go to the that they want you to do this. Add a comment. Although I know Phil doesn't always see the alerts all the time. So you send this, this basically comes up, he gets a little red dot on his bell, let him know as a notification. Then you're gonna send him an email to mca at kwvito.com, letting him know the opportunity, the opportunity address and exactly what it is that needs to be changed. You don't need a long, hey Phil, one, two, three, nine, four to 436, Castleberry, Florida, three, two, seven, oh, seven. List prices changed from three hundred thousand to two hundred ninety thousand dollars. Please correct the commission request. That's it. Okay. If all of a sudden Bob the buyer backs out, I want nothing to do with this. I don't think that did they put it not yet. So if Bob the buyer has backed out. He did the inspections, or let's just say, God forbid, due to COVID, he loses his job, so he can't get financing. This is not going to go through. There's absolutely no way this transaction is going through. 
this buyer has failed. Then request a termination. This is not for correction. This is when the deal has fallen through. Again, this is not for corrections. This is for when the deal has completely fallen through. And I ask you, it'll be permanent removed. You sure want to terminate it? Yep. The reason I'm doing it now is because if he imported it into Winmore, it would count against my numbers. That's why I'm doing it quickly. So I apologize if I went too fast. Last thing I wanted to do is all of a sudden, you got all these uh, terminations. So you can go to the documents. You can notify him by end the comment. Whatever changes to the, uh, you know, well, Barry, you type the at, you know his name. You should be able to find Phil. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever changes were made, he gets that. He's going to really love that. One. <laughs> he's going to get the notification. Then you're going to send him an email. Include the address in the subject line and make sure that he understands opportunity with this address. Please correct commission request, change listing price, blah, 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 blah. That's it. I like it. That is as simple as it can get. That's it. Now the DocuSign part sometimes throws people throws people a little bit off. And we'll go over that some other time. But that is all there is to the opportunities. Okay. It used to be a little more convoluted. It's because when we first had it, we didn't have these drop down lists. Well, without the drop down list. It kind of made it difficult for people to know well, what it is, what do, what do I need for this type of transaction? What do I need for that type of transaction? Well, I'm trying to make it so that you do know. The only thing I haven't added to these yet, and I'm waiting for, for permission and confirmation that we're going to add it, would be like if you were the buyer and or listing agent, tell our office. But other than that, that's all there is to the offers of commission. Oh, got another, let's see. Give it a second. Oh, I always check my chat. I see something come up. All right. Notes, again, the notes are more for you as a single agent. The notes are for you to see. It's like, you make notes on the you know, notes on the transaction itself. If you want, you know, sometimes you want to put a note, sometimes you don't. Depends on where you want to put it. This is your business. If you prefer to put it underneath the contact, put it there. If you want to put it within the transaction, put it there. Maybe you want to put a note saying uh, something about you know the uh, other agent that is doing this. You know, kind of notes that aren't necessarily pertaining to the contact but are pertaining to the transaction. Timeline. Everything that I've done in this transaction today is timestamp. Remember how we started out with new construction? Then we went to list and vacant land. Then we went to list and condiment. Everything I've done, hmm. I updated it from that to that. Everything I've done has been documented, which is great. So the timeline kind of goes through. The timeline makes more sense to agents on a team or a rainmaker like myself, because I can see who's done what. <laughs> Everyone can say, oh, I didn't do it. Well, that's not what the timeline said. Mm -hmm. Not only do I know what day you did it, I know what time you did it. But it's more for making sure that something's done. Now, I'm going to come up here. These are the checklist items. These are checklists. This is something that I highly recommend. It, it's not necessarily part of the opportunity, but I'm going to go through the checklist with you because that also has to do with client updates. So when you're in a, when you have your opportunity, and let's just say, and I'm going to go through. Just go to my listing active. Um, actually, I'm not, let me 
bear with me for a second. I'm going to switch over because everything's done through my team. So I'm going to pick, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> well, here's my active. It's either pre-MLS staging, it's active in the MLS, showing open house, negotiations. And again, like I said, we don't use that. But how do I go, like for example, if I want to move this from showing open house to now we're under negotiations, I just drag it over. Go to the six dots and drag it over. So let me show you a neat little thing here. This is where it says, what, what phase are you in and what stage? I'm in the active and I want it showing open showing house. But let's say, remember just a second ago, I had active and negotiations. If I save it here, if I go to look, it's moved. So I can move it one way or the other. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. May I recommend everyone create checklists for your stages. Go up here to edit stages. Give it a second, wait for it. Under each particular stage, I have a checklist of items that need to be done. And you think about it, there are certain things that you do. And as you grow in your real estate business, and maybe you have team people that join your team or other agents that are working with you. And if they are, and they're looking at your opportunity, they need to know the things you want done at this point or that point. For example, just to give you an idea, I have these 10 items for three MLS stages. So we make sure the house has been cleaned, depersonalized, decluttered. My wife's a certified stager, so she uh, does and does the staging. We schedule the, schedule the photo and tour appointment with the professional photographer. Make sure all the contract paperwork has been, you know, everything's ready. We send copies to uh, to the agent or to the seller. I create ad copies for marketing for pro for the uh, campaign. I get all the photos, make sure I have everything ready. In other words, I, I get the photos from the photographer, make sure I get everything lined up and labeled exactly like I want. We have the post installed. And then I schedule the, no, the initial open house. And then I'll make sure the HOA rider or condo rider, if need be, or everything's all filled out so that the day we go active, I now change the MLS listing from incomplete, I make it active. I add the lot box, I can figure showing time. I list, make sure the information about the open house is on realtor.com and Zillow. Make sure the for sale sign is definitely on the sign, on the post. I create single property websites and make sure I share that. I create just listed graphics, I post them. I update, of course, as need be and make sure my listing folder is up to date. Each of these are little items that I do, whether it's showing the open house, all the different things that you can do at each stage of the process. The reason I like to do that is because when I'm here with this particular seller, I can give her a client update. I can let her know, hey, I've done, I, I've I haven't set hers up. That's why she, she didn't want the updates. But I can tell her uh, at a certain time. Yeah, that's why I'm going to say it over it. My default for this one is no. She didn't want them. But I can tell her at a certain time, any time that we do something with those checklist items, I can make it so it sends her an email, a pretty email. Mm. See if they pull up the example again. Yeah, we know, we know. Hold on, let's pray they have the pretty email. Come on, pretty email. Heck no, of course not. With the client update, it's a very nice email, has a, the uh, picture, the, the, the number one picture MLS in the background. It tells, in this case, when my seller actually, hey, actually, this is what we just completed, or this was just completed, this was just done. 
Guess what that counts as? Touch. Keep them updated. We we have a, we have a, a weekly call on Monday. I don't know what status is unless something changed beforehand. But if something happens, I let her know. See these right here. If I say I want to send her something, if I want when, when this was done, if I want her to be notified, she can be notified. I can even assign who has to do the notification. If I want to assign, let's say Renee, you're on my team. Mm -hmm. It would be your job to present to the, K, the KW office caravan. I assign that task to you. Once you've done that task, you come here, check it off. If I have this checked off, Ashley gets notified. So I can assign it to a team member and I can set a, when the due date for this particular. Lots of neat little toys in your opportunities. I want you, especially if you're agents, to focus on the basics. Worry about all this up here later. I want you to focus on the basics. Oh, they're active, aren't they? Oops, wrong one. There you go. I got so many pipelines, I don't know where they're at. Focus on this. You know, you want to fill this out as much as you can. As much as you can. This you can't do nothing with unless they actually download and register on the app. When I see documents, I think, Renee, mm -hmm. I see that right there. What am I thinking? Uh-oh, she got it up close. I think since so wrong. Oh, documents compliance. Okay, there's a the hair. Make it bigger for you. Okay. I don't have my glasses on either. <laughs> I'm like looking at the screen like, what? <laughs> Offers and commissions. Does anyone have any question with that? You make sure you add your offer, accept the offer, make sure all the, the commission information is correct and you submit it to the MCA. If you need to make a correction, the most important thing is to send an email to the, to the MCA, Phil, mm -hmm. saying, this is the address. These are the corrections that are needed. You are not to use the terminate commission request because you made a mistake. If you needed to put in the different list pricing, you need to do whatever else, something's changed, that goes to fill via email and preferably through the uh, chat and the documents. Terminate, terminate commission request if and only if. The deal fails. Deal fails. There are a lot of agents that think that termination request, oops, I made a mistake or I need to change the list price. That's not what it's for. So I ask you now in the last few minutes, any questions? Hmm. Recommendation, if you are at once you get your checklist created. You can always come up here and I, being that I'm in an opportunity, it's saying for this opportunity. I come up here. I knew it was going to do that. What are my default settings? So who gets what when they get it, things of that nature. I think I said, yeah, 1030 in the morning. Whoever's the owner of the front of the uh, of the opportunity is the one that has the email they see. So it's either gonna be myself or, or my wife. And here you go, here's the preview. Just nice little, you know, it has all your information, download your app. No, it's not gonna have all this, this is just filler. But I have your information from your marketing profile, the picture of the house that you're selling. It's nice. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I did mention earlier, and we'll do this real quick. Uh, I'm going to go into consumer and look at the guides. Remember, I was talking about in the where it talked about the buyer's guide and the seller's guide. Mm -hmm. This is the seller's guide. I need to update that. But I put in the belief system. Then I talk about showing the home, reviewing offers, inspect. It's the steps, appraisal, and close. For the for the seller, that's his steps. That's all he wants to see. The buyer, the belief system. I changed it around. I said the first thing you need to do is get pre-approved. I think they had start your search first. I'm like, we're not looking at homes unless you're pre-approved. I'm not. I'm not a tour guy. You know, this tour homes. I'm still not a tour guy. Make an offer. Execute the contract, home inspection, home insurance, home warranty, close. So if they register on the on your app and you're in there and it says seller profile or buyer profile, you could tell them where they're at in the in the transaction process by using it. That's why you want to recommend when you're working with them, have them download the app. Well, I don't want to buy another house from you. This will allow me to make sure you know where you are in the transaction process. Because most, from what uh, I think it was NAR did a study, the one, especially sellers, the one thing they did not like about working with their agent was the fact they had no, they didn't feel like they knew where in the process they were. They felt left out. Hey, let's, let's keep them involved. Let's, let's make sure they know where they're at. Mm -hmm. It's just me and you now. All right. But anyway, do you have any questions for me now that you've eaten everything there? <laughs> <laughs> what were you eating, darling? Chick fil A. Oh, you only got a high Chick fil A now. I know. Right. I was in the class and I had to drive home, so it was just, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm in the, the night class. I understand. Yes. No, don't ever apologize. If you need to eat, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna say a word to you. I'll stop. Sometimes I stop and get me something to drink or whatever. You know, this is for you. If you need to eat, I need you to eat. You're <laughs> more, no, you're more. Your health is more important than me sitting here. So, you know, if, if it's something that uh, you need to go eat right then and there, I've had people do that. I've had someone change the baby's diaper and then a little bit of everything. So it doesn't bother me. Well, thank you. I tried to wait at least toward the end. So I didn't want to smack <laughs> all in. Well, oh, I heard <laughs> I heard the rapper all the time. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh. That's why I made that comment. She's eating something good. <laughs> they got you to laugh. Now you now you feel better. Yes. Yes. I think I'm gonna have to get in there and play around with it. So and that's that's the that's the case mm -hmm. with command period. Is yes. the fact that it it's not rocket science. Mm -mm. You just have to play. You yeah, I just know out, where you have to. Yeah. You, you you need to take your time, and you need to. Look, I you see the dummy that I the dummy contact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Create one of your own, and then go in there and create a dummy opportunity, just like I did. Oh yeah. And then you know play around, see what it does. Make sure you archive that opportunity when you're done with it. Okay. I tell everyone to do it. Okay, that makes sense. How how else are you supposed to learn the tool if you don't get to use it? Well, I don't, want to, I don't want to use it on a natural customer. Then make up one. Mm -hmm. Make mm -hmm. up one. And I mean, be honest with you, what I've, I've done in the past, or I've told people I've, I've actually did this in the past, make up a dummy contact, but use an email, not your KW email or anything, but you, not the one you're using for business. But if you have a mm -hmm. personal email, give them your personal email. So when you send emails, you can see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Same thing with DocuSign. 
make sure it has their, you know, the, your personal email address and your doctor sign for that dummy customer. Then you go see exactly what their experience is. That's how I had to do it. I had to go through one computer doing one thing, one doing the other, so I could see what the experience was. I can't tell you what the experience was if I haven't seen it myself. Well, you know, funny you say that. I was trying to send out my app, and I know um, the Keller Williams app. Okay. So I was with Josephine, and I said, well, which one? I want to make sure I have the right one. So um, the KW one was the one I actually downloaded. And then when I tried to send it to her for a test, it kind of came up really weird. It didn't open up. Something was going on. She's like, that's weird. I'm like, okay. And she told me, I might need to talk to you. I said, okay. So I sent it to a friend of mine. I said, hey, can you open this up and let me know if you can see anything? But he said it was fine. So for me, I, if I could send it to an email, it worked better than if I were to send it to a text. I don't know if that makes that much of a difference. Well, but. it really doesn't. It also depends on how, how are you sending it. From the iPad, you send it from your phone, how are you sending it? I was sending it from my phone. It shouldn't because be a difference, to be honest with you. The major, the, the, the one thing that you want to make sure is complete at the end of the text message is the URL for your branded app. Mm -hmm. If for some reason part of it got cut off, like if you tried to copy and paste or something and only part of it got copied and pasted, it's mm -hmm. not the whole thing, it's not going to work. No, I was just going straight through the app and it was like share. Right. And then if on my phone it would pop up email or text. So if I hit text and then, you know, the person. So I don't, we'll see. I'll say, I'll look at it. Cause if you look now, like I have this here, but I also have my, my, I don't know if you can see, but my other, my full computer is right next to me. So right. some of the, as you were talking a little bit, I was trying to look through some of it. <laughs> hey, was, so, I was, was eating Chick-fil-A and <laughs> Well, I'm just, I mean, you, it's, it's so much, but I mean, it's almost like, um, you know, for me, I'm a hands-on learner. So, you know, it, if I can kind of visualize it and do it at the same time or whatever, I'm okay. I'm sure that Josephine, because I, I, we had already discussed this with all new agents, that she recommended that you take the command one-on-one -on -one class. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. really, even though that needs to be updated soon, Re recommend it. Okay. It's yes. the foundation. You need the foundation. You need the basics. And Nick did a great job of laying that out. Okay. I'm going to stop recording.